Remember, we need surge protection, which we haven't got to yet. In 23062, it says you need surge protection for services that was added in the 2020 code. Okay? And the reason being because we have smoke detectors, we have GFCIs, AFCIs, so services had to have it. But then in the 2023 code, it said, well, what about if you run feeders to a remote, to a dwelling unit and, and, and doesn't have services? So that's what we just covered. That, that was in 225, was it 18? That we had to, I mean, uh, two, yeah, 215. 215 that no it was two what was the what the 25 was the 224 what was the one about surge protection 215.18 215.18 and we're going to find another one here in a second 215.18 said well if you run feeders to a remote building right and then we have those other type of spaces you need it okay well 23085 in the 2020 code required that there be an emergency disconnect for dwelling units located well let's just say you need an emergency disconnect located outdoors, readily accessible location. But what about if you don't run a service to a remote building, for a dwelling unit rather? Well, we still need an emergency switch. So what 22541 is, is that you have to have an emergency disconnect for a dwelling unit. Now, 225 says, even if it's a feeder, see, 23085 was for a service, 22541 is for a feeder. So. Here's a service, and it's going to be 23085, and it's going to give rules about how you describe it and how you size it and what's the information there. Now, this is a dwelling unit, so 22541 requires, one second, this search, yeah, emergency disconnect. Oh, I got the search protection there, got me through off there. We need to have an emergency disconnect at that location if it's a dwelling unit because it might have been a feeder and not a service.